Hey, how's it going, people? This is Hellbent, and this is going to be a two part mini series. So, this is a uh, mini tutorial number eight in the Auto Hotkey series. Um, this one, we're going to be looking at how to suspend hotkeys as used in Auto Hotkey. So, specifically, we're going to be suspending the hotkeys that you create throughout your script. And then in the second part, or mini tutorial number nine, we're going to look at how to do it for other applications. So, for example, Windows or things like that. Okay, so let's just go into it. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a couple of hotkeys. And I'm not going to add anything to them just yet. I'm just going to set them up for now. Ooh. Once I'm done this, I'm going to have to collect my bearings for a second. I don't think, uh, it's hard for me to think about um, the things I want to cover while I'm typing. So it's best that I just get it out of the way now and be done with it. <clears throat> okay. So I'm going to create, I'm going to use number pad 4 just to pop up a message box because this is going to allow us to see that we've actually suspended things and we will say um, whatever. Okay. So let's look at normal suspending hockey. So what we're going to do is we have we have the number pad 4 assigned to pop up a message box. Now what we're going to do with number pad 1 is we're just going to create a toggle that we can use back and forth to suspend all of our hotkeys. And the way we do that is just with suspend. And I'm pretty sure that most of you already know this stuff. But uh, we'll get into some stuff that you might not know. Okay, so we have our script. It's, it should be running. Yeah, it's running. Okay, and if I hit the number pad 4, we should get a message box that says whatever. Okay, now if I hit the number pad 1, and then if I look at my icon tray or my tr tray, I can see that we have, instead of an H, we have an S. And if I try to hit number pad 4, instead of it popping up our message box, what it's going to do is just type up the number 4. Right? And like I said, number pad 1 is a toggle, so all we have to do is hit it again, and we've unsuspended our script. Now our other hotkey should work like normal. Okay. Now let me exit, so that way I don't have any problems. Okay, next what we're going to look at is suspending. We're going to use number pad 2. And number pad 2 isn't only going to suspend all the hotkeys, but it's going to suspend itself as well. And we're just going to type suspend on. Alright, so we're, for this example, we're not going to use number pad 1. Actually, at the end we will. At the end we will. Okay, so let's run through the process again. So we have number pad 4, and it's going to pop up our message box. Okay, if I hit number pad 2 now, what it's going to happen is not only is it going to act, it's not going to act like a toggle anymore. It's in fact, it's going to suspend itself afterwards as well. So if I hit number pad 2, I can now see that the script has been suspended. And if I try to type the number pad 2 again, it's just going to type out the number 2. Likewise with the number 4. And we can go back to use number pad 1 again to unsuspend all of them because it's a toggle and we will get our message box again. Okay, um, next what we can do is we can use number pad 3 in kind of the same way as we did number pad 2, but in reverse. And this time we're just going to say off. So any, any hotkeys that have been suspended through any any process whatever so whether it's the toggle or whether it's a suspend on once we run this one it's going to disable the it's going to re re-enable all the hotkeys 
Okay, so let's go through our process again. Number pad four, we get our message box. I hit number pad one and we suspend it. If I hit number pad one again, it enables it. If I hit number pad two, it suspends it, but it also suspends itself. Now if I hit, and if I look again, I can see that they are suspended. Now if I hit number pad three, it's gonna re-enable all our hotkeys. So I hit number pad three, I can see that it's back to that. So in this case here, you would use this if you don't don't want to have it as a toggle. Like let's say you're not you don't know what the state of the the toggle um, whether you're suspended or not. You just really all you really want to do is just make sure that nothing is suspended. That's when you want to use this, for example. Okay, now let's go into one more. We'll go into what if I have specific hotkeys? So for example, my exit, my emergency exit. What if I don't want this one to ever be suspended? What I can do is I can make it exempt. I'm not gonna bother with this one here. What I'm actually gonna do is up this one up here. So, uh, but you would use it for something like your exit app or some pause or things like that. So in this one, all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna type in suspend and then we're gonna permit. Now, regardless of whether the hotkeys are suspended or not, it's still going to run. So let the first time, I'm just going to go through it like before. Number pad 4 gives us our message box. Now I'm going to hit number pad 2, which not only disables itself, but also disables all the other hotkeys. Okay. Now, since we have it our hotkey suspended, I'm going to actually use the number pad 4, which we've made exempt from suspension and show that it's still going to pop up its message box. And there we go. And we can see that we are still suspended. Okay, that's it for that. One last thing and then I'll let you go. Um, the order in your, in your hotkey, when you initiate your hotkey, the order is very important. These keys, if they're not at the very top, they won't work the way that you, you might expect them to. So for example, we have our suspend key up here. Now this is the toggle, so if I click it once, it'll suspend everything. If I click it again, it'll unsuspend everything. But if for some reason I have some other bit of code before it, it's going to act like this, and we're not going to be able to unsuspend it. So here, I'll run this. So I hit number pad four, no problem. I hit number pad one, and we get, we can see that it, this, I don't know why it's doing that. It's not supposed to do that. Okay, we can see that it is suspended. If I try to hit number pad one again, it's not going to unsuspend it because it's not the first thing in our hotkey. So instead of that, we're just going to end up typing out the number one. Okay, and that's it for this tutorial. Come back for the next one where we're going to look at suspending or overriding Windows keys, uh, other application keys, and some tricks that we can do for that. All right, have a good day, and I will see you on the next one.